Hello everyone and welcome to part 6 of this video series. In this part, we'll focus on adding functionality to our theme icon. In particular, when we click on this button, it should toggle between light and dark colors. So as we see here, we have a light theme. And when we click on it again, we have a dark theme. In order to accomplish this, we'll be using React Context. But what is React Context? Well, as indicated by the React documentation, Context provides a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props down manually at every level. This is very useful in our scenario because we can create a global theme state and instead of having to pass this down manually at different nesting levels, for instance, the header, search, and search results, we can simply use React Context, and I'll show you how to do this. First and foremost, navigate to the app.js file. In here, we'll create a state for the theme. I'll call it dark mode. And we can initialize this to false. Now, head over to the source directory and create a new folder called context. In here, we'll make a new file called themecontext.js. Let's import React. And now we can create our theme context. We'll do this using React Create Context. Then we'll export this. Let's navigate back to our app.js file. Inside here, we'll wrap the dashboard in a context provider. This will allow it to subscribe to context changes. So let's do that now. In particular, we'll use the theme context that we just created, dot provider. And we'll place the dashboard inside here. Next, we'll also pass in a value. We'll pass in an object that contains a dark mode and the function for setting the dark mode, set dark mode. Let's try using this context now. Let's head over to the theme icon component. In here, I'll write dark mode and set dark mode equal to use context of our theme context. And I'm using the JavaScript destructuring property here. Now, in our button, let's pass in an on click. But first, we'll make a function to toggle the dark mode. So I'll call this toggle dark mode. And it'll toggle that value. We should pass this in now as the on click. To check that this works, we'll apply a different style depending on whether it's true or false. So I'll replace this with a template literal. And at the end of this template literal, I'll have some JavaScript. 
So we'll check if dark mode is true. And if so, we'll apply a shadow of gray 100. Otherwise, no. I'll do the same thing for the moon icon. Let's replace this with a template literal. Again, we'll check if it's dark mode has been set. If so, we'll apply fill yellow 400 and stroke yellow 400. And if it hasn't been set, we'll use fill none. And the stroke neutral 400 that we had over here. I'll move that down here. So just to recap, for the button, we check if the dark mode has been set. And if so, we apply a shadow. Otherwise, we don't apply anything. And for the moon icon, if the dark mode has been set, we apply a yellow fill and a yellow stroke. Otherwise, we apply that default color we had with no fill. Let's see if this works. As expected, the style changes. This indicates that we implemented the context correctly. For the next step, we'll need to go through each component in our React project and apply a different styling, depending on if it's a dark or light theme, because so far we only have this theme icon that changes. Let's move on to our dashboard component. Again, I'll use context to get our dark mode state. Now, I'll replace this class name with a template literal. And I'll put some JavaScript in here. We'll check if dark mode has been set. And if so, we'll apply a background of gray 900 and text gray 300. If dark mode has not been set, then we'll simply use this background neutral 100 that we had before. So if dark mode is set, we'll apply these styles, otherwise we'll apply these styles. Let's try clicking the theme icon button again. So as expected, it changes the background color and the text color, but it doesn't look that great. So we still need to style the other components. I'll also make one minor revision to our theme icon component. In particular, we have shadow gray 100. I'll replace this with shadow gray 800. This will look a bit nicer. Next, let's go to our card component. We'll do the same thing. This time, if dark mode is set to true, we'll have a background of gray 900 and border gray 800. Otherwise, we'll have our background of white and border neutral 200.
let's see what dark mode looks like now. This looks much better, but there's still a few details to fix. Next up is our chart component. The steps will be very similar. Let's scroll down to our linear gradient. We'll replace this and again check if dark mode has been set. If so, we'll apply a darker color. Otherwise, we'll have the one that we placed initially. I'll copy paste that over here as well. So that should be good for the linear gradient. And let's also modify the tooltip. So down here, we'll apply a content style. We'll check if dark mode is, has been set. If so, we'll return an object. Otherwise, we'll have no. And in this object, we'll have a background color. We'll do something similar for the item style. In here, we'll modify the color. So, as we can see here, the chart has a nice dark purple color when the dark mode is selected. The tooltip as well has a nice style. If we toggle back to light mode, we have the color we had initially. Next, we'll modify the details component. We'll modify the style of the unordered list. In particular, we'll change the divide color when it's dark. Let's continue with the search component. Again, I'll replace this with a template literal. And if dark mode will apply background, gray 900, and a border of gray 800. Otherwise, we'll have background white, border neutral 200, which we had initially.
I'll also change the input class name. And I'll give it a dark background, background green 900, if it's dark mode has been set to true, otherwise no. We'll leave it as its default background color. And finally, our last part is the search results component. If dark mode has been set, we'll apply a background of gray 900, border gray 800, and we'll move our custom scroll bar inside here. But we'll also have a custom scroll bar dark. Otherwise, we'll simply have our default, which was the background of white and border neutral 200. So I'll move that inside here. Let's take a look. So if dark mode is set, I put background gray 900, border gray 800, custom scroll bar, and custom scroll bar dark. Otherwise, we'll just have a custom scroll bar And remember, custom scroll bar is in our index.css. It was these custom classes that we made. And we, remember, we also added an additional one called custom scroll bar dark. This one had a background color. And lastly, let's modify the class name of our list item. So we'll have a different hover color depending on if dark mode is set or not. If so, if dark mode has been set, we'll have hover, background, indigo 600. Otherwise, we'll have hover, background, indigo 200, so a lighter color. I'll also replace this color here because this is redundant. Let's inspect our search bar. If we type something in and press the search icon, it has a dark theme with a dark purple when we hover on top of it. This looks great. When we have a light theme, it appears as it was in the previous videos. If you made it this far, let's look at the entirety of our app and toggle dark mode. This looks really good. In the next video, we'll finally be able to use the Finnub API using Fetch. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.